Good morning, folks. John Smith, Central Beekeeper Supply, out here with my lovely wife, Corinne, this morning. It is August the 14th. Um, all of our honey has been pulled. We had an exceptional honey harvest here uh, in Central Arkansas. The weather, it's honestly, it's been fabulous. We've had 100 degree plus days, but we've maintained rainfall. So, you know, you can tell by looking around, everything's lush and green and we're mowing the yard once a week and it, on and on. But what we, we need to be thinking about is pest management. You know, at the store, we hear people and everything that's going on with, with their bees. And that's great. That's, that's what we want to do. Um, high beetle numbers, they have increased dramatically. Uh, reason being, these hive beetles know just like every other living thing that that fall and winter is ahead of them right now they're on the back side of summer <clears throat> what that means is is those hive beetles come to these hives looking for refuge they're, they're looking for a sponsor to keep them alive through winter the adults are going to try to lay in the hives that here at the last minute um you know we're, we're hearing slimed hives absconded hives due to the sliming it's the the varroa mite is following that so we've pulled honey the the bees ha are at a moderate level um i haven't been in them in a couple of weeks you know you you have to you have to be in the boxes to know what's happening to know what's going on we're gonna we're gonna do today a varroa sample of a hive you know if, if these bees if this if this mite check is very high you can pretty well count that every box of bees you've got in that location are going to be the same um that's not always the truth but that's what you can suspect uh hive beetles is not our target today we may do something on that uh, a little later on you know, September is typically my treatment starting month. Uh, that should be a low number of brood. If, if we see what we saw last year, these bees will hit a strong fall flow. If they do, sometimes the, they respond just like it was April. They, that, that nectar starts coming in so fast and, and quick. They're white waxing, they're building up and that queen kind of triggers to go ahead and produce her winter bees. It's, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, when she produces all those bees, if we've already done a mite treatment earlier and these bees have mites, what very well can happen is, is the adult mite will jump off in the cell with the, with the egg and larva stage brood, and then they will produce more so that they have a host for winter as well. But the, we, we know that the Varroa stays with these bees year round, but we want to knock them down. It's crucial that they're not down over winter. That's when your bees deal with them the most within the hive. So I, I think I've said enough just to, to get you to where we want to be. We want to do a Varroa sample. So the items that we have here, is 70% rubbing alcohol so it's not a it's it's just a generic 70% rubbing alcohol that it, it's not a harsh 90 99% uh, you want to use a diluted alcohol because what it will be is hard on your equipment it may fog your plastic and you'll have a hard time seeing through this to count your mites then you're forced to pour this through <coughs> a filter to catch the mites, get the alcohol off of them so you can do your count. This is this is just a, this is your sampling device to collect the bees to show you the Varroa count. You, it, is, it is a lid, it is an interior basket, and it is a container that's clear that you can see through. All right, the goal is to get 200 to 300 it's going to be mostly nurse bees that are sitting on open brood that's that's our target we want to get 
the bees that would be directly affected by the mites because we know that the mite load jumps off of these bees. Your old mites lay in the open cells of brood. That should be your highest concentrated mite area. So we're gonna put our liquid in our check cup. The bees will be collected and then put into that. We know that, that that cup sets roughly to here. We want to be up on about the depth of the 300 mark. Gonna be a little higher because we, the cup sets up. That's probably gonna be exactly what we want. I can see the line, we're about a quarter above the 300 mark. That should be, should be sufficient. We want to collect there again. We're going to get our sample in our basket. We're going to do that by going in here. We're going to find the queen. Find the queen. Get the queen out of the equation. The, you, the last thing you want to do this time of year is to wash a queen. Then you're combining a colony because you've just rendered it queenless. The chances of them requeening on their own is getting very low. So locate that queen. All right, we're gonna get started. We're picking on a on a single deep. This was a honestly a late swarm, and for as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think it came uh, mid June. You know the old additive, you know swarm in July, let them fly. Crin hasn't dressed me yet this morning, as you can tell. I fumble with these zippers. It's been a lifelong problem. Bear with me. All right. So, let's get into here. Our goal right now is to find our queen and get her somewhere safe during this. You know, I expect that we'll have <clears throat> a great fall flow due to the rainfall that we've gotten. I mean, it's just been, it has been a fabulous summer. It's been a hot summer. Well, we really only had about, what, two weeks of hot, and then it's 80, the high today's 86, which is almost unheard of in Arkansas in August. That's exactly right. All right, one hive beetle. We can't even allow that. Look at that bee run up there and check to make sure she's dead. All right. No queen on the inner cover. These bees are, they're needing to hit a flow. They've still got frames to to draw. You know, I hear time and time again, I'm certain my bees don't have any mites. My question always is, how do you know? The answer usually is, I'm not seeing them. Well, I hope you're right. But I'm afraid that the reality of it is that you've got a, a certain percentage of mites. It's, it's just going to happen. Bees are social insect. They come in contact with every other bee out there. 
and if you got a neighbor that's got got bees and he's not doing treatments you know that could be spawning a mite load that you're unaware of hey if you if, if you don't treat you don't treat but I'm telling you your success rate goes up dramatically if you, check, so if you check and treat for varroa <clears throat> we got open open cells and nurse bees open cells cap brood one hive beetle on a, in a small colony especially is pretty impressive. This time of year, there's another one. See, and that one's in here in the, in the brood area. That's not, that's not impressive. And there's mama. Just, just brought her tail out of a cell. See her going now. Yeah. Let me grab your point catcher uh, out of your pocket. You uh, got it. I think I can get it here. Like I said, we want to make sure we protect her. <laughs> She's a big girl. Alright, we have lots of bees to choose from here, I think. I want to go into this next frame. Now, I know, Mama, we'll, we'll let you get back to business here in just a minute. Oh, yeah, you're, you've been doing a lot of laying there. Right, can you don't I see that's really all cleared sales in it oh uh, yes they're dry right, well then, now this one's got larva mm -hmm. on this side so the frame we caught her off of mm -hmm. she was laying but this one has also has open brood. I think I want to back up to where she was laying. She's got tons of brood, though. I mean, you, you're looking at it could be scattered. But we really want the open cells. So this is open cells, and the frame next to it was open cells. And this frame really has a denser population of bees on it. That's what I want. To take this sample not much capped and still being capped larva all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to get our sample off of this frame what i what i do think is going to happen is i'm going to get my sample and have to let go of this frame so that i can keep the bees in the cup so I'm going to probably hand you the frame when I get the... Maybe I should have put on some gloves. <laughs> when I get the sample. Ah, oh, they're, they're super calm. Right after you rake that cup over them. True, true. All right, so you YouTubers have already that have done this, watched this. Y'all have saw the tub and the shake these bees in the tub and gather your sample. You've seen people rake them. You, no right, no wrong. 
the wrong thing to be to do would walk up and scoop bees off the front of the, the hive and call that your check spot. You got to check where the brood is, okay? That's your high percentage zone. All I'm saying is it doesn't matter how you get this sample. Just understand you need to get it from nurse bees setting open brood. So we're, we've chose just to go ahead and do it this way. You think about 300 bees, that sounds like a large number. If you had that 300 bees on a frame, it'd make a little old patch about that size. So, yes, we're going to kill some bees in this alcohol, but those bees that we lose are, are given their life for a reason to better this colony. So we're going to find out some valuable information. So here we go. Okay, we've got our sample. Let me take the frame. Corinne's got the frame. Mm -hmm. Now, those bees are euthanized literally within a second or two. As you saw, we did not really even clear all the bees that were on that frame to get that sample. There's, in the afternoons, this hive, the whole front end is wrapped in bees. There's no, no shortage of them. We're going to do a little shuffle switcheroony while we're here so that when this fall flow hits, bear with me briefly. We're going to move some comb. Boy, y'all are some propolizing machines. Yeah, that got your attention, didn't it? That, that kind of upset you. Oh, she's got brood scattered plum over here. Got some on this side, too. Does she have any honey in there? Nope, very little. Hand to mouth. And they better get busy. Their stuff's starting to bloom, Hand so. Very little. I guess the partridge peas blooming, the... The devil's walking stick. The goldenrod is soon to come. The lespedeza has started blooming. You know, if it was cool, getting cool at night, I wouldn't separate this brood, but it's not a big deal when it's this hot and there's plenty of bees to cover. Well, and you're doing it for a specific reason. And yeah. they've got, right, they've got comb, they've got to get built up. I'm going to leave them in this box over winter. Oh, I know, I know your mama's right 
the intents not to kill any of y'all than more than we have to, so. Turn down the hill. Turn down the hill. Down the hill. Go down the hill. There you go. Out and high. You go back down in there with her. I saw her on my side go down. I don't know if y'all got to see it. Y'all go. All right. Now, the sample has been taken. There are no bees moving or living in that sample. So, what we're supposed to do is shake this sample for 60 seconds. Do you shake it hard or swirl it? Well, you can swirl. I got a timer going here. Do you really? Yeah. How come you think all the... It's that mother thing. You think of the time-saving <laughs> steps in life, John. Not the hay I got all day. All right, I think the vertical shake seems to put the agitation to declump and wash. You don't want to use anything you know, Don dishwashing detergent will kill them and kill them fast. Problem is, you start shaking it up, you got a whole <laughs> container full of suds, you can't see anything. So that's why you are you are to use a liquid. All right, you're at 60 seconds. That allows you to do this. You're good. And see, did you say that's been it? Yeah, time's up. All right. I got mine. Okay, can you get, if you can step, I'm gonna step between the highs, can you get up through the, the what light we have? Those red or reddish brown or whatever you want to call that color are your mites. I count from this angle four. Karen, do you see, I can't, is this a, I don't think it is. Yeah, this, it is this, this, and this is four mites. Four mites on a 300B sample. How, how do you put so like, acceptable? So what, what puts them at risk is five at 100, which would be 15 at 300 would be at risk. Okay. So you just said it's less five than mites per one hundred. So that these four divisible in three gives you the percentage of mite load. But the the, the point being is your based on the sample and the end result that we want do the math again. So if it if you have three hundred bees you want less than 15. And we are way less than that. So these bees are not at risk, according to this sample, they are not at risk of collapsing due to Varroa. So, you know. I, I guess you could take those an unfortunate, the bees out and look down in it too, huh? An unfortunate status 
for the sample bees. There's what they look like washed down. They're still at the 300 top mark. Okay, those bees, excuse me, died within, oh, it was under a second. I know it was. The minute I put them in, they stopped hitting my hand. So we're kind of going to do a little flush here. We'll just see if we get an extra mite by pulling the basket, washing the basket. Okay. I got no, no mites residually hanging out on the basket. And I still see just the four. And you still got the four. All right, I call that a successful. Now these bees will be dumped in a baggie and thrown in the trash to be thrown away. That will be dumped down a drain rather than pitching it out here on the ground uh, to be absorbed or kill something else. Anyway, um, that is how you do a Varroa check. I get it. For a long time, I didn't want to kill 300 bees to find out what I kind of knew. But in this case, I have to say for the time of year that we're in, I expected that might load to be much, much higher. I think we should do another hive in the same yard just to see. We will, we will do another sample out of a larger colony, see if it gives us a greater number. Like I said, you got mites, you got mites. And some of them's probably got high mite load, some of them's got low mite load. Your small colonies, if this had a high mite load, it would need to be addressed right then because obviously they will be the ones that can't deal with that mite load. To make a long story short, folks, this is a great idea. Rather than caution to the wind, I don't see mites, it's all okay. We would have never visibly found four mites with our eyes. I would not have. Somebody might have good enough eyesight that they could, but you'd have done a lot of looking to have come up with four. If there's four, there may be 40. You're doing a sample based on numbers. We did this today. We hope this helps. We hope you find it to be, maybe, it, maybe it's just gonna help you have the, the, the calmness, the awareness to go do a mite sample. It's not a big deal. Um, you'll get some information that, that you can use. You'll understand more about mites and treatable and how to treat. We appreciate you watching us, and until we see you again, roll that beautiful bee footage. Thanks for watching.